Hello everyone, uh, this is Ori Bloop. Welcome back to another Game Builder Garage tutorial. Um, today we have a dice roll. So I know a couple of you guys um, commented this on um, a couple past videos, uh, but basically the objective here is when we press A, um, the six on the die will go ahead and spin and change. So let's go ahead and press A. And if we see that the dice basically moves around and it gives us a new number, so now we have, we're on two, um, we can go ahead and press it again. And of course, we'll get a new number, so four. And um, if you guys notice that the dice is only staying in like uh, one specific area, that's because I'm using an invisible box. Um, in this tutorial, I will not show how to make the invisible box, but just how to make the, um, the dice itself and how it functions. And um, I will also be leaving a game code for this tutorial um, after this video. So uh, let's go ahead and get right into this tutorial. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is get our dice object. So if we go to objects, fancy objects, uh, rectangular, and we can go ahead and grab our dice. Um, in this case, I'm not going to actually change... Um, the uh, dimensions of the uh, dice, but if we go ahead and look in the game, um, it's just basically the uh, standard dice that I showed uh, previously in the demo. Um, but if we go back into the edit, we can actually start um, applying the uh, functions for this. Uh, just to make it easy, I'm going to go ahead and put this dice in the air settings, and I'm just going to make it not movable for right now, and I'll show exactly why. Um, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is um, since we have six sides of our dice, uh, we're going to actually want to apply uh, six different touch sensors to the dice. And the way it works is basically depending on the face that our uh, dice lands on, is it's going to show up the opposite. So I'll, I'll kind of explain it as we go, go in the video more. But uh, if we go to objects, uh, sensors, and grab a touch sensor, we're going to make it, um, if we go to the settings, we're going to make this... Uh, point 10 on all sides just so it's easy um, So it doesn't you know interfere with any other uh, touch sensors that we have so we're gonna get one And you have to make them really small because they are point 10 by point 10 uh, But we're just gonna copy this six times um, Actually, we're not gonna do that yet uh, the first thing we're gonna want to do is go to settings and for the connection point um, if you guys notice if we go ahead and do X minus and target connection point x plus um, if we go ahead and uh, connect it you guys will see that um, it will actually show up how we want to so um, if you see it will show up exactly on one side of the dice and it will it will stay right there and basically what we need to do is do that for all six sides so after we did that one we're going to go ahead and copy this and we're going to go ahead and we're going to give some space. All we're going to do is go to settings and we're going to change the connection point. So we did X minus uh, and X plus. So we're going to actually do the opposite of that. So X plus and X minus. And if we go ahead and copy, I mean, uh, connect it to our fancy object, it should show up on the other side. And see, there we go. So we have one side and the other side. And basically, we're going to just continue doing this for all the sides. So... Um, go ahead and copy this and we're going to make this a, uh, Y negative and Y plus. Um, I'm not going to connect it yet. I'll connect it last. Um, so since we did Y negative, Y plus, this is going to be Y plus and Y negative. So the complete opposite. And we're going to copy this and we're going to change it to, uh, Z minus Z plus. And then we're going to copy that and change it to um, Z plus and to Z minus. And then basically all we have to do is go ahead and connect these to our dice object like that. Um, move this over here. And there we go. So we have all our touch sensors connected. So if we go ahead and look on the dice object, we actually have um, all of our touch sensors on each of the side of this dice. And... Um, just to show, if we go into this mode, we can go ahead and um, look and see we have this, this side, this side, and basically it goes all the way around. So now all we have to do is apply that 
to um, some sort of number system. In this case, just to show, um, just to showcase really easily, we're gonna actually go ahead and um, just get a number object. So uh, we're gonna go to special objects and grab a number object. And then that's how we know uh, which number we land on. Uh, so let me go ahead and move that over here. And we're just gonna put that over to the side. So all we have to do now is uh, basically, depending on which sides these give, we have to have a constant attribute. So uh, go to inputs and grab a constant. So since we have six different types of inputs right here, or six different types of touch sensors, we're gonna need um, six different types of constants. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy um, six constants. And before we move them to uh, each individual place, I'm just gonna go ahead and arrange them so that they go uh, from one through six. So I know this is pretty tedious, but I found this to be the uh, best way. I, I bet there's probably some sort of way where um, you can make it so it shows on which face that you land on, but um, I'm just trying to keep it simple here. And this is probably the most uh, simplest way to do this. So um, just bear with me. So uh, for the last constant, we're, this is just gonna be a six like so. And there we go. So now all we have to do is attach these um, numbers to the faces on the dice, which this is the tricky part because basically um, since our touch sensor is touching the bottom of our dice, the bottom of our dice has to reflect the number on top of it. Um, I know that's a little bit hard to understand, but um, I'll kind of do it if I remember. Um, we'll have to play with it. Um, but what we want to do is for this touch sense, uh, well, actually, I'll work with the Y first. So for the Y faces, since our target connection is Y negative and Y negative is one, um, this is actually going to be six right here. So um, for Y negative, it will be a six. And of course, a Y plus um, is going to be a one. I might have mixed that up, I'm not sure, but we will check um, in a bit. And I know that five and, um, I think it's five and two that go over here, and three and four are the opposites over here. Um, I'm not exactly sure, but that's why we're gonna experiment here in a bit. Um, and now all we have to do is go ahead and multiply uh, these by their counterparts. So basically the touch sensor is a input or I mean an output of one. And of course our constant is one through six. So it'd be three times one, four times one, six times one. So basically we're getting a constant attached to each side. So go to middle and we're gonna go to calculate and we're gonna just get our multiply. And we're just gonna uh, just make six of those just for each individual one. So for the first one, we're just going to go and connect like that. Yeah, this is all just tedious work, but um, it works very well. Um, I haven't ran into any problems with um, this specific method, but we're going to go ahead and connect it to the final two. Okay, just like that. And now, since what we have here is, um, depending on which touch sensor it, it touches for the ground, um, it will actually go ahead and match up with each constant. But before we connect it to the, uh, the number uh, object here, we're gonna actually go ahead and make sure for the touch sensors that for check what, um, since we're just checking the world, uh, we're just gonna select world, but of course, uh, depending on the level or depending on what it drops on, you're going to want to change it to box, cylinder, sphere, whatever you drop it on. So we're going to have to change all of these, um, all of these uh, check what's for the world. Okay. So just checking for the world. And of course, we want to make sure all our touch sensors are connected to our dice because if they aren't, if they aren't then they don't. Um, that they won't work, of course. So here's the last one. Okay. Now all we have to do is go ahead and uh, connect each one of these 
to our num number object. Just like this. And the final one. There we go. So now what we could do is we can actually go ahead and switch our uh, thing to overhead view. So basically it's giving us um, a bird's eye view of the numbers and also the dice. So now if we go and check, oh, I forgot one thing. So for the number object, uh, since we're switching the face of our numbers, we're going to actually do the text display side on uh, Y+. Plus. And now what we should do is it should start working. Uh, it looks like it is not. Let me make sure that uh, everything is connected. Yeah, this is the uh, tedious part that I'm talking about. You have to make sure um, everything is functioning correctly. Okay, that seems to be functioning. Um, let me go ahead and Oh, I know why. <laughs> Our, uh, so before in the tutorial, uh, we actually made this uh, non-movable. So we want to make this movable. So now it will drop. And there we go. So uh, obviously, this is not a 1. This is a 6. So all we have to do is go ahead and switch the 1 and 6, which is really basic. And that's what I'm saying. We're going to have to just play around with it. But um, we'll get it to work and function correctly. So um, six, just like that. And if we go ahead and look, now it oh, now it should uh, display six, just like that. And of course, we can go ahead and turn this completely around. Oh, actually, sorry, we have to switch views again. Uh, that's annoying. Um, switch views like that. And now we should get a one, see? So now we have a one and it shows and displays one. So now what we're gonna do is um, just play with, around with it a little bit more and make sure all the numbers work. So we're gonna try it on this side now. So now four, yep, okay, so that's correct. And of course, um, if we move this around like that, it should work as well. So three, yep, three is displayed correctly. And now for the last numbers, um, I think they're on the, oh wait, I think they're going to have to be on this side. Let's see. No, that's not correct. Um, let me see if that, sorry, I'm just trying to see how to test this. Um, here, actually, what we could do is we can just drop it from a higher height and see if it works like that. Okay, so four works. Um, let me see if I could just hold and replay it until we get a new number. I think it's going to keep on doing uh, that same number. Okay, so what we could do is since we don't, uh, since we can't properly test this, what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, we're going to make the function where it basically rolls um, with a button press. So uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do is uh, keep our dice object here because um, that's what actually, you know, makes it look like a dice. But um, in objects and fancy object or um, special objects, we're going to go ahead and grab a rotating box like that and make sure it's the same exact size of our dice, which it should be. And all we're going to do is basically connect it like that and for the connection type or sorry for the connection point we're going to just do center and center so basically what's happening is uh this is taking basically form of our dice and it's acting as if it were our dice um, and we're going to turn off destructible and destructive and we actually do not need uh visible on either so now uh, that should work just like that. Actually, let me go ahead and connect it like this. See if that... Okay, yeah. So you want to make sure that it's connected like that because it's kind of weird how it works. Um, but make sure it's connected like that. And uh, for the input, of course, uh, if we want to roll with A, we can do that. Or we can roll with another button. Just up to you guys. Um, so we have A... And uh, in this case, I haven't used this yet, but we're going to be using the random node on. So uh, how that works, of course, is uh, it gives a random output. 
So uh, what we're gonna do is for the random number, we're gonna connect it to all the axes, uh, the axis uh, for the rotating object. So the X, Y, and Z. And for the random number, we're gonna just do uh, connect it to the A. And then all we're gonna have to do is uh, connect that uh, to the reset also. Um, might seem a little bit confusing, but basically when we press, oh wait, sorry. Uh, we don't want to connect it to the A because it won't even work. Uh, what we need to do is go to middle and grab a timer. Sorry about that. I totally forgot about that part. But um, grab our timer and automatically it sets it for uh, one second. So that's all we need. So we just have to connect the A to the timer and then reset. So basically what's happening here is when we press A, it will give a random number for one second and then it will reset the random counter and then basically it will stop rolling so now if we go ahead and look our dice will drop and if we press a it will randomly spin um, accordingly um, so let me go ahead and switch the view uh, let me go and fix this dice too we can move this up Okay, it should spin accordingly and for our number object just to make this easier um, i'm going to turn off everything besides visible so sol or uh, yeah we're going to turn off solid as well um so if we go ahead and look in the game uh and press a it should give us a random number so let's see if we can get five because that's what we need to test um five or two okay so it looks like it works um five or two works as well so um, no matter how many times we press, it will give us a random number. But of course, you guys could see that um, you can't even see it on screen anymore. And that is because you should make a invisible box around the dice. So basically, it doesn't go out of control. Um, here, we'll try it from a farther distance. But basically, uh, no matter how many times you keep spinning, it will go ahead and give you the correct number. Um, and that's exactly what we want. So uh, hopefully this will help some of you guys, um, especially when you're making board games and stuff, because uh, I know that's a lot of your guys' objectives for your projects is you want a good dice roll. Um, in the future, I plan to actually make like a board game or like a card game. Um, and I think a dice would be really cool to implement, um, especially using this tutorial. But um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the code on the screen and you guys could go ahead and uh, download it and mess around with it and add it into your own projects. Um, thank you guys for watching and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.